Thank you. So um, we started out and you said that overnight it was good to fast for 12 hours, 12 to 16 hours. What about longer fasts, fasts that are like um, a 48 hour fast, a weekly fast, a several week fast? And you and would that be with green juice or with water? And is, is there a benefit to longer term, meaning from one day to three weeks of either water fasting or green juice fasting? Is there any information, studies, or science on this for Parkinson's or Alzheimer's? Yeah. Steve, you want to comment on this? Yes. Um, fasting is an art and a science. And it, there's something called Buchinger fasting, which is highly developed in Europe. And it's actually, they're taking in about 200 calories per day uh, from uh, juices, freshly made juices, mostly vegetable juices, keep the glycemic load down, and also broths and teas. And this has been done in metabolic wards as well as at home. It's been studied quite a lot. And what's very protective about this type of fasting is the large amount of antioxidants that are being taken while a person is fasting. Now, Ray Dorsey, I'm sure, would agree that our fat cells have gotten some of these persistent organic pollutants into them. And while we're fasting, we're burning our fat cells and these persistent organic pollutants get into our bloodstream. It's very nice to have some antioxidants and anti-inflammatories in there to stop them. I am not a proponent of water fasting. It's uh, known as starvation fasting. And I think in the seventies, it pretty much was shown that it was inferior as far as protecting people during the fast. Uh, certainly you get fast results with water fasting, but it's also much more dangerous. So fasting with the broths, the juices and the teas, the broths are very nice. Like a potato broth is very alkalinizing to the body, which the bloodstream tends to try to become more acidic during a fast. And it's very nice to have this soothing broth along with it. So I would suggest that if people are going to fast that they do that. However, in Parkinson's disease, especially in the later stages, we have weight loss as one of the big problems. So you would not wanna fast if you were already low in weight, of course. So where we find it most helpful is in people who are a little overweight and they have some degree of insulin resistance and we're helping them to become insulin sensitive and we're helping them to become metabolically flexible. That's where I think it can be very, very helpful. Um, yeah, as Steve mentioned, making sure that you have some antioxidants on board, very helpful. So we are very careful about that for people who have low BMIs. Uh, if you, you know, if you're down at nine, you know, 19, 18 BMI, I am very worried about having you be fasting. And to go one step further, I would, I would like to see is people move toward a nice plant whole food diet. And that's going to provide the benefits of fasting. Some of the best benefits of fasting are not getting the animal foods in the diet. And of course, in the Buchinger system, as any well-developed fasting system, you want to slowly decrease your dependence on heavy foods before you begin the fast and then break the fast very gently with the lightest of foods and then gradually return, hopefully not to your prior diet, but to one that's a little bit lighter than your prior diet. For me, I would prefer that people start changing their diet to a much healthier diet. And one of the problems with fasting is the lack of fiber. And even with 200 calories a day and with juices, there's not much fiber in there. And that increases inflammation because it is fiber that drives our microbiota to make the short chain fatty acids that feed the inside of our large intestine cells. It, that is necessary to reduce inflammation in the gut. And as we all know about the gut brain axis. Well, for me, my website is drsteveblake.com. Uh, my books are generally under $10 in an ebook format, and you can get uh, brain and body food if you're having uh, memory problems there too. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure.